Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we are building this live edge concrete epoxy, every buzzword you could possibly think of table. And this is probably the last build I'm gonna be doing as far as furniture for a long time before I'm full on reno for the foreseeable future. That's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what kind of videos you like. I hope you like them both to be honest, but it is what it is. So let's dive into it. For this design, I only want the inside of the slab to have a live edge. So I started by getting out my track saw and cutting the outside edge straight. Before we go any further, I gotta take a second and thank this video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. I've been playing Raid over the last couple weeks and it reminded me how much fun I had playing those classic RPGs as a kid. Raid is a cross-device dark fantasy role-playing game available on PC and mobile devices, and it's free to download and play. Raid takes you to the epic world of Talaria, where you collect, equip, train, and upgrade your teams of heroes called champions and take them into battle against the undead hordes of Siroth. As you battle, you'll acquire different types of shards which allow you to unlock different champions. Here, I'm using a mystery shard, and I got a pretty cool barbarian, but this guy's just a common champion. Let me, let me try again with some ancient shards, which can summon rare, epic, or even legendary champions. This lizardman looks pretty tough, and he's just a support champion who will help other champions by enhancing their attack powers and restoring health points. Speaking of attack types, this Bone Knight looks like he'll be pretty fun to take into battle. As you progress in the game, you need to level up your champions, and one way you do that is by going to the tavern and sacrificing the champions you no longer need. Here, I'm sacrificing two level two champions to up my sniper to level three. You can also put your champions to the test against the massive raid community and ongoing local and global tournaments, including the brand new arena tournament. So head down to the link in the description below. You can even challenge me if you're in there. My nickname is Industrial, so just look for me if you log on. If you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver and the badass Hexweaver champion for free. And once you sign up, you'll find those rewards in your raid inbox right over here. So much love to Raid for supporting this channel and everything I'm doing here. And now, back to the build. Before we flatten this thing, we're gonna fill all the voids with epoxy so they're stabilized. And to prep for that, I used some tuck tape, taped off the back of the void so that the epoxy doesn't spill out on the other side all over the place. And yeah, let's, uh, let's pour that epoxy in. This little step right here goes out to all those hand tool lovers out there. I'm showing you that you can flatten a slab with hand planes if you don't have or just don't want to use a planer. But I have a power planer and I want to use it, so I did. Sorry, not sorry. Moving on. All right, nice and flat on that side. Next up is the main epoxy pour. As I'll explain in a second, this will be a bit different than your typical river table pour since one side of the epoxy form will be made from carved foam. The idea here is that we want to get a layer of clear epoxy that kind of mirrors the shape of the live edge. And I'm just gonna trace the shape of the live edge on the top onto this pink foam you are. We're gonna flip that foam over so it creates a mirroring edge that we can then pour the epoxy into. So it'll kind of be like a river table pour, except on one side there'll be foam. Then we'll take the foam out and can pour the concrete where the foam was. Hopefully that'll all work. Let's, uh, let's see what happens. I used my jigsaw to cut along the live edge line I'd drawn on the foam. I then flipped the foam over so the curved edge faced the live edge of the wood and used a cheap turkey cutting knife to cut a changing slope in the side of the foam so that it approximately mirrored the shape of the live edge wood. I refined the curves of the foam further with the 120 grit sandpaper and then covered the side of the foam with tuck tape so the epoxy wouldn't stick to it during the pour. I also used silicone caulk to attach the foam to the melamine sheet which will form the bottom of the epoxy form. 
Before securing the live edge slab inside the form, I brushed a seal coat of Total Boat High Performance Epoxy onto the live edge. This seal coat will prevent air in the wood from escaping and creating bubbles during the main epoxy pour. After the seal coat cured, I scuffed it up with some sandpaper and mixed up some Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy for the main pour. And I selected the Thick Set Epoxy because the main pour is going to be 1 and 1 8 inches deep. I let the thick set epoxy cure for three days before demolding. Now, while it might look like the epoxy stuck to the melamine here, it didn't. What you're actually seeing is a vacuum that formed between the epoxy and melamine. And once I broke the vacuum seal, the slab popped right off. Had a little epoxy spill under here on this the, the side we flattened out. So I'm gonna have to knock that down with a hand plane so we can put this through the planer again to get both sides flat. And this springs like shrapnel all over my face, if you can't tell. So definitely safety glasses are a really good idea. And not such a good idea was trying to plane the slab without clamping it down. So I remedied this by getting out my trusty T-Track clamps and carried on. That was a lot of work, but uh, yeah. It's just nice and flat, so now we can run it through the planer. I've drawn a center line here so that I can check whether this edge here is parallel to the center line of the epoxy and trim it if necessary so that the epoxy will basically be running right straight down the center of the table. As I suspected, the straight edge wasn't parallel with the center line, but not a big deal. I just used my track saw to cut it parallel. I then gave the slab a quick sanding and applied one coat of sealer. While it might seem odd to apply sealer before cutting the table legs from the slab, I'll explain the benefits of doing this preliminary finish in a moment. After the finish dried, I used a carefully adjusted track saw to cut the 45 degree miters. I'm not gonna lie, making these cuts with the track saw was nerve wracking, but you really only got one shot if you want to get the continuous grain effect wrapping around the miter corners. I'd love to have one of those sliding table saw thingamajigs in the new shop, so, Hey saw stop, what do you say? Call me? Fortunately, the miter cuts went pretty smoothly. So I busted out the domino joiner to create some loose tenons, which will add strength and help with alignment for gluing up the waterfall legs. Before starting the glue up, I masked off the edges surrounding the this is really just insurance since the coat of finish I applied earlier should prevent stains from glue squeeze out. Now this glue up is a bit atypical since I used epoxy on the epoxy portion of the joints and wood glue on the wood portions. This way the epoxy waterfall transition will be as clear as possible but I'll have maximum strength in the wood sections because of the wood glue in the loose tenons. I initially cut the legs a bit long, which allowed me to come back after the table was assembled and cut the legs to their final height of the table saw. This approach ensures that the bottoms of the legs are perfectly parallel to the tabletop and also that both legs are exactly the same length. I moved over to the table saw to cut the melamine pieces that will make up the concrete form. I also used the wood half of the table to adjust the fence to cut the sides of the form. 
This ensures that the concrete half of the table will be the exact same thickness as the wood half. With all the melamine pieces cut, I could move on to assembling the form for the concrete pour. Now this is going to be a little tricky and different than our normal concrete pour because of the fact that we want to keep the epoxy and wood from getting covered in the concrete and we're going to be spraying the concrete up these vertical surfaces. So what I've done here is just taped off all the edges and taken some garbage bags and taped those on to basically cover all the wood with plastic so it won't get concrete on it. I've also come back with some construction screws here, tapped them into the sides of the wood there just to give it a little more bite and bond between the wood part and the concrete part. And now it's time to start assembling the form. After assembling the form with hot glue and drywall screws, we get to everyone's favorite segment of the show. That's right, it's time for Cock Talk. I apply a layer of paste to the melting, lay down a generous layer of 100% silicone caulk, run a metal fondant ball tool over all the caulk lines. Metal fondant ball tool pushes excess caulk to the sides, leaves a clean line over the seam, and the layer of paste makes it easy to peel the excess caulk away once it cures, leaving a perfect caulk line. And that's it for this episode of Caulk Talk. Uh, one other thing to note here, I use clamps to hold the wood in. I'm not using caulk on the edges against the epoxy because I've sometimes seen where little pieces of the black caulk could actually get trapped in there permanently and I don't want that. And of course, it's a industrial tradition to begin a concrete day by dexterifying the shop, covering everything with plastic sheets. It's go time for the concrete and this one's gonna be a little different because we're putting that thin layer of epoxy over the cured epoxy, which should tack up before we put the first layer of concrete in. It took about an hour for the epoxy to get to the gummy, tacky state where I was pretty confident that the epoxy would bond to the concrete as they both cured. At this point, I could mix up the first batch of concrete. And since the form has two vertical surfaces, I'm going to be spraying on the first batch as a 1 8 inch face coat. The face coat doesn't have glass fiber or any large aggregate in it, so it provides a very smooth surface when removed from the form. I'm using a relatively inexpensive modified hopper gun to spray the face coat. It has a 45 degree connector between the gun and the hopper, so you can spray both horizontal and vertical surfaces. Links to the hopper gun and all the concrete products I use are in the video description. I waited about an hour for the face coat to firm up and then mixed up the first backer coat, which is the same GFRC mix as the face coat except for the addition of alkali resistant glass fibers. For this batch, I used a bit less water to achieve a thicker Play-Doh-like consistency. The thin layer won't slump and hand packing it allows me to really work the concrete in and ensure there are no air pockets between the face coat and backer. After the first backer coat had a couple hours to firm up, I came back and added back forms on the legs. I used these melamine back forms since the backs of the legs will be visible, and I wanted to make sure they were flat and flush with the wood half of the table. I let the concrete cure 24 hours and then remove the plastic and tape. I was relieved to see that the wood and epoxy were in pretty good shape. However, I was getting a bit ahead of myself in removing the plastic since I still needed to do a bit of processing on the underside before demolding. So I decided just to throw caution to the wind and go for it. First, I used diamond sanding pads to get the concrete edges flush with the melamine, ensuring a nice straight bottom edge. There were also a couple air pockets that left gaps in the backs of the legs, which I filled in by hand with more GFRC mix. It definitely would have been better to do all this before removing the plastic, but fortunately there wasn't any damage to the wood that a little sanding couldn't fix. After the patches set up for a few hours, it was time to demold and see what I had. Concrete Christmas. 
Now that it's out of the form and flipped over, I can see that the epoxy concrete bond is working. It feels like one solid piece and super happy about that. One downside is that the concrete looks like it did seep under the epoxy just a bit, so it's not perfectly level but that's not really a big deal. I'm just gonna have to sand the concrete down. That's gonna inevitably end up scuffing the epoxy up and maybe the wood too. So we'll have to repolish the epoxy, re-sand the wood. Basically we've got a few hours, well, hopefully just a few hours of finishing work to do here. And then this thing will be done, but I'm super excited about how I think it's gonna look. So let's get on into that. <laughs> I polished everything up to 400 grit and at this point applied the concrete sealer. Now I had to stop here for the sealer because it won't absorb into the concrete if you polish it past 400 grit. After letting the sealer cure overnight, I continued to wet sand the epoxy up to 5000 grit. And the last step to get the epoxy beautifully clear is polishing it with Total Boat's rubbing compound followed by its finishing compound. I then applied Maker Brand Simple Finish to the wood. So now some quick updates on the renovation for those of you that are following that. I'm gonna be moving into some temporary Airbnb housing in about a month and living there while I'm finishing the renovation here. So after this video, basically it's all reno all the time until it's done and ready for me to move in. If you guys are digging this build, I've got a whole playlist of concrete and epoxy projects right up there that I think you should check out too. And another big update for me personally is that I sold my old loft. I'm leasing it back from the new owner for a little bit so I can move the workshop over slowly over the next month or so. And I'm thinking about actually doing a loft tour at the old place. So if that's something you're interested in, leave a comment. Let me know if you want to see a loft tour video before I move out. That's it for this time and I'll see you next time.